My name is Corey Charles Harris. I was born November 18, 1910 in Dumas, Arkansas. My mother's name, Ella Huspeth Charles. My father's name, Commodore Perry Charles. My older sister's name, Ellen Charles Crockram. My baby sister's name, Ruby Charles Bell. My daddy was a carpenter and he provided for us real well. In fact, I think before he came out here, he had maybe 10 or 15 houses there that he built himself. My mother was a very lovely woman, and everybody loved my mother. She was that kind of a person that you couldn't help from loving. When I finished school in Dumas, Arkansas. I went to Arkansas State in Pine Bluff, Arkansas for three years. And then I got a scholarship to Dermot Academy for one year. I was a basketball star. I was a little Kobe. All you had to do, give me the ball. In fact, if I couldn't go with the school when they go out to play, they didn't want to go because I was it. As I said, I was a little Kobe. When I left Dumas, I decided that uh, I wanted to go to Little Rock, Arkansas to further my education, to stay with my uncle. So when I got there, I started working then, still going to school, I started working at the Baptist Hospital there until I left and came to California. And how I met my husband was, he was working at a store and as I was coming from work from the hospital, I would pass the store, and he would come out and ask me, what's my name? And I said, none of your business, what's my name? Well, he kept asking me that till finally, we got to know one another. And finally, uh, we got married. Yeah, I don't think he went to church much, but when he got, was going with me, he had to go to church. Even after I went to Little Rock, I would go to church. And then he started going to church with me. And that's how he got to be also a very religious young man. After we was married for a while, we decided to come to California. And uh, because he had a brother out here, and we wanted to come to California to see his brother. So when we came to California, we decided we wanted to stay. But his brother told him, if he had a job back in Little Rock, he better go back there and stay because men can't find jobs now out here. That uh, men been eating out of the wife's apron for years. That means he's bringing food from the kitchen and giving it to uh, their husband to eat. Meanwhile, I had got a job in San Marino with a couple. So Lon said, well, I want to go out to see her. And Uncle George said, no black is allowed in San Marino unless they have a job. So Lon said, I can go in where my wife is. I just want to know where she is. So Uncle George told him that I was in San Marino and Lon came out in San Marino to see me. And when Mrs. Jordan, which the lady I was working for, saw the both of us, she said, you two are too lovely to be apart. So therefore, Lon can come and stay here with you and keep our cars up and just get him a job out in his city somewhere. Lon finally got a job at the packet agency and he had to deliver cars for the packing agency. And as he would deliver the cars, he would stop sometime and talk to Mr. Blackburn, which was the foreman over the water department. 
And Lon would ask Mr. Black one, why didn't he have any black working for the water department? And Mr. Black one said, well, they won't work. And Lon kept, every time he would pass, he would talk to Mr. Black one. And finally he said, Lon, I like you. Why don't you go and put your application in at the water department? And Lon did, and they hired Lon. And he was the first black that worked for the water department. My husband was always a lovely person and he always would just pet me all the time. And so, and he loved TV. And when we bought a TV, he was looking at the TV so much. So I told him, okay, if you're gonna look at the TV, I think I'll go back to school. So I went back to school and studied for my real estate license and my nursing license. And uh, because I just thought the TV took my place. <laughs> and I never forget when I was in real estate and I asked this lady, did she want to sell her home because there was a black had bought her a house next door to her. So she said to me, yeah, I'm going to sell. She said, but how far are they down there? And I said, they're not very far, but when they get up here, they won't bite you. So I guess I said the wrong thing because she did not give me her house for sale. I had one son. He was born in Arkansas. His name was Theodore Perry Harris. He was a very smart young man. He went to the Army for three years. Then he came out and he got married. He loved to go to school. And then he was stricken with cancer. And he came home and he fell dead at my feet. My husband, Lon, died with a heart attack too, just like my son. I never will forget the morning we were going on a trip the next day. And he got up that morning, was walking up and down the hallway. And he said to me that he thought that he had indigestion. And I said, well, don't you want me to call the doctor? He said, no. I'll be all right. And that time, he fell dead with a heart attack. That was the saddest hour in my lifetime. I always has been a churchy person, and I was in Pasadena two weeks, and I joined Lincoln Avenue Baptist Church, and I've been a member there for 75 years. In fact, I am the oldest membership at that church, and I am the oldest person at that church. Now my daughter-in-law always said that she had to get a, a ringside seat in order to hug me on Sunday because there'll be a long line waiting to come to hug and kiss me on Sunday. My church family is so sweet to me. I did a lot of church work there. We go and pick up bread and pick up food, vegetables and whatnot, and we bag it, and then we have people to come to our church to pick it up. But once a month, we have about 150 people coming to pick up big boxes of groceries from our church. And I've been in that uh, field now for about 30 years. As I tell everybody, I still got all my teeth. They're not in the cup. <laughs> I can read without glasses. And uh, 
I, uh, I don't take any medicine. I don't take, I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have low, I don't have anything, nothing. When I go to the doctor, he said, Carl, what are you coming here for? I go every six months. I said, just because I have an appointment. Only thing the matter with me is my knees. And I've come to the conclusion now that I'm not going to talk about them anymore because anything carry, anytime you carry something 101 years, what you expect?